Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor, and as always, a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. I'm out in the woods today, duh, and I've not come to my usual woods. I, I come here infrequently, I've been here before, but it's not my go-to permission. In my go-to permission, it's, it's fairly heavily wooded. I can always, always, always find somewhere to put my hammock up, to put my ridge line of my tarp up, and to extend my guy lines out to on my tarp. Today's a little bit different though. I'm gonna show you around my, my setup today. Today's a little bit different. Today I've found a wonderful place to string my hammock up, perfect. I'm using the same trees, unsurprisingly, to suspend the ridge line of my tarp, perfect. But it's quite a nice day today. I've only put it up because we're expecting some showers later. It's quite a nice day. I don't want to coop myself in, in the tarp. I don't want a, the, the traditional A-frame type of setup because I find it just restricts my, my, my vision and it restricts the, you know, the nice cooling breeze. It's quite a warm day today. So I want to have my tarp quite open. I only want it to protect me from above, not necessarily the sides. And because I'm lacking trees to extend my guy lines out to, I'm gonna have to peg them down into the ground, thus creating that traditional A-type frame shelter, thus doing exactly what I don't want to do, which is to restrict my view. So what I thought I would do is share with you the setup as it is at the moment, and also show you a little tip that I've only recently started doing, to be perfectly honest, since I came, started coming to this woodland and I like this spot here, that might help some of you out in the future if ever you're stuck for being able to find somewhere to extend your guy lines on your tarp out to. Let's take a look at the setup as it stands at the moment though. There you go, you can see my hammock there suspended from that tree to that tree. The ridge line of the tarp is also suspended from that tree to that tree. The corner of the tarp here has been extended down there to a small sapling. The corner of the tarp on this side has been extended down to a small piece of dead standing. Where is it? There. No. There. Let's take a look at the other side. This corner of the tarp has been extended out quite high. You'll notice that what this does is it makes this porch here, this side of my tarp, really, really elevated, gives me loads of air circulation and lets me see out. It does also give me a lot of working space underneath and gives me a good view as well. However, when we look at this side of the tarp here, this corner, it's looking a little bit sorry for itself, isn't it, compared to the others? The reason being is when I pan out this way, there is nothing. There is no shrub, tree, sapling, or anything that I could extend this to, to give a nice raised porch. There is a huge tree here, as you can see, huge tree there as you can see, but nothing, nothing in between for me to suspend that rather sorry for itself looking corner of the tarp out to, unless I make a tree. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. So we understand then that there is nothing high level for me to extend this corner of the tarp out to to keep the porch of the tarp nice and high. There are no trees or shrubs within a decent distance for me to do that. So let's create one, as simple as that. I've taken probably a six, six and a half foot upright piece of dead standing. This woodland behind the camera is absolutely rife with pieces of dead standing around this diameter, nice and light, relatively straight. I've just taken one of these down and this is going to become, to some degree, my false tree, my false upright, my false support. 
Now I'm not going to be able to tie the guy line around this because this isn't fixed into the ground. This will just fall over like that if I do that. But I can help, that upright there can help to elevate the porch for me to do something quite clever around that upright and back down to the ground again. Let me show you what I mean. There's my dead standing upright. Here's the corner of my tarp. I'm gonna loosen off that hank of cord there. I'm gonna stand my upright, pull the tarp taut, extend the guy line out at 45 degrees, and I'm gonna stand my upright in line with that to help it remain taut so that it's not pulling off at an angle and helps to keep the top of the tarp nice and taut. Brought you a little closer in. There's the upright. It's in line with the corner of the tarp and the tarp is pulled taut. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pass the guy line which would not or the yeah the guy line which would normally just go down into a peg in the floor. I'm just gonna pass it around the tree, over the top of the incoming line there and pull it tight. I've not even tied the knot, I've just looped it over. Again, I make sure that this upright is in line with the corner of the tarp, that the tarp ridge line, the guy line is coming out at 45 degrees. And you can see now, if I hold this end, the loose end, I can actually move, <laughs> whee! I can actually move that entire upright up and down. It's not falling anywhere, it's staying nice and erect. It's not falling over, it's not moving, it's bouncing up and down on almost the same spot on the ground. So that looping of the cordage around this has actually trapped the upright into position. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, this dead end of the cordage here, I'm going to run it down to the ground and stick a peg in it. I'd just like to give you a close-up now of that so you can follow the whole process from beginning to end. Here's the corner of the tap that, that didn't have anywhere to live. Here's the guy line coming off that tap to the upright, there's the upright. If we look down that guy line now, back to the tap, we can see that the tap is pulled out nice and taut and tight at 45 degree angle. Line coming in, from the tarp, try and get you a close up there. If it blurs, I'll put a still photograph in the video so you can see. Simply goes around the back of the upright, on top of itself, and then down to the ground, around the peg. Nice and high, elevated, give me plenty of air circulation, a decent view, the corner of it being pulled out to that upright, simply hooked around the upright and locking into itself, not really a knot, and then down to the peg. There we have it folks, a really, really simple way of being able to still keep your tap nice and high and open and airy if, if you want to do that, if the conditions and, and your personal preferences want to do that. If you're not in the woodland to allow you to do that, as long as, you, as long as you can get hold of some form of, of decent, solid, doesn't have to be green wood, but it clearly doesn't need to, can't be rotting either, upright of wood, you can create what I've created behind me there. I don't often do this if I'm really honest, because like I said, most of the time I'm in woodland where there are trees really close by that I can hook out to either around the main trunk or around branches that are drooping down, as I've done over there in the elder, just on this side, 
I'm unable to do that. I think what I'm going to do is when I go into the woods again, even into my regular woodland, I might try and, and keep my hand in with this. So even if there's a, a, a tree, if, if there's an upright of a tree that I could go around, I might still keep my hand in doing this just to keep that, that muscle memory there about how to wrap the, the, um, the cordage around, lock it in on itself and then pull it down to the ground. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know. Do you do something similar to this when you're stuck? Might not be with an upright. I know that many people use those, those trekking poles. So I guess a similar option with those types of, of uprights, those uh, man-made uprights as well. But do you do something similar to this? Is this brand new to you? Have you ever fallen foul of taking this approach? I'm very conscious that that is nowhere near as stable as an actual sapling or an upright of a tree or a tree descending down, a branch descending down from a tree. It's really only positioned there by tension. However, if I go over to it, you notice that I'm, I'm batting it around a fair deal. You could probably see it wobbling and, and, and moving around, swinging from side to side, but actually I, I wouldn't want to get hit by that as it's swinging from side to side. There's a lot of tension there, so I'm still quite confident that in anything other than really awful weather, that would still do its job. As always, folks, looking forward to hearing your thoughts, ideas, suggestions about how I might have done this differently or your own take on this subject in the comments below. Always a pleasure reading them and I'll see you in the next video very shortly. Take care. Cheers.